It wasn't long ago that wristwatches were considered a pure novelty. Before they were diving into trenches or soaring above the sky, wristwatches were seen as a delicate liability, prone to the elements. A few cracked crystals and broken stems out in the world might still be a testament to this philosophy. As it were, the first wristwatch ever officially commissioned was designed for the Queen of Naples in 1812. This contributed to a view that the wristwatch was not for common use, but only for niche pageantry. Because of this mentality, the pocket watch prevailed as the default time accessory for most of the 19th century. As the thinking went, the pocket was a logical place to keep your timepiece from harm. After all, it was a cozy and convenient spot for centuries. However, as industrialization and war became increasingly emergent in the late 19th and 20th century, the wristwatch became an invaluable utility. So, in today's video, I'm going to be talking with you about how timepieces were and still are an invaluable tool in war, along with the origins of military watches. So, make sure to like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more. And without further ado, let's run the intro and get started. The first official use of military wristwatches is something of a debate among the historically minded. It is said that the first mass production of military watches was for German naval officers in 1880 by watchmaker Constant Gerard. However, some argue that the first military use came from British soldiers during the Boer War in 1899-1902. to They were also potentially utilized by Japanese soldiers in the Sino-Japanese War from 1894-1895. to no matter the origins of use, these rudimentary wristwatches were seen by their users as an easier way to synchronize time with navigational data or command orders on the battlefield. Having a hands-free approach to timekeeping lessened the chance for human error. In tough situations, freehand movement could keep a ship on course or keep both hands on a wheel with less distraction. Around this same time, a Brazilian aviator requested a similar piece from Louis Cartier for a similar need. The beginnings of a wristwatch revolution were found in these examples, but the real surge in use was due to the demands in World War I. The Great War created a demand for both navigational and battle-ready timepieces that could be easily read in combat situations. Hamilton, Omega, and Elgin were among the first to develop wristwatches for the war effort, especially after the US joined the fighting. Though many rudimentary wristwatches from this time were essentially pocket watches with straps of fabric soldiered to them, perhaps a little chunky, their use in both the skies and in the trenches gave soldiers the overall ease of use they required. The demands for industrialized warfare came with a need for more rapid and efficient time telling and navigation on the battlefield. The wristwatch exceeded in its capability to provide for this need. On top of the battlefield practicality, the use on the battlefield gave watch manufacturers a less fragile and more agile marketing tool for their newly developed timepieces. Wristwatches weren't just for queens and pageantry anymore, they were a rugged piece of pragmatism made manifest in everyday life. Fast forward through World War II up until today, a plethora of technological advancements have continued to reinforce the wristwatch as a battle-ready necessity. The invention of the chronograph wristwatch, for example, allowed for the increased accuracy of time synchronization in military communication. As well, this led to the tachymeter coming into use for calculating distance and speed when moving supplies and troops across miles of sky, sea, and terrain. Furthermore, the technology of dive capability has made the wristwatch integral to dive missions and naval upkeep alike. Post-World War II and beyond, military wristwatches have become a symbol of honor, integrity, and endurance. The increased accuracy and structural quality of these timepieces through the years has established them as the proverbial rock stars of the watch world. It is perhaps no surprise then that so many young people are still receiving their father's, father's, father's old timepiece as new generations keep moving time forward. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, make sure to give it a like, and if you'd like to see more content from us, you can subscribe right here. And as always, if you need any help repairing your watch, the link to our website is right here. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.